Here's the windup and the throw. It's a slider over the inside corner. Swing and a miss, and the ball game is over. Baseball is played with beautiful simplicity, but beneath that simplicity is complex physics. There's a lot of physics to explore in the 60 feet, 6 inches, from the pitching rubber to home plate. So come on, let's take a closer look. Play ball. Pitchers do everything possible to influence the flight of the ball. Strength, ability, and knowledge of subtle techniques all go into the pitch. At the release, three forces control the ball's trajectory. Gravity, air drag, and the Magnus force. Assuming that the initial velocity of the ball is horizontal, if you turn off all the forces, the trajectory would be a flat horizontal line from the release point all the way to the backstop, what we sometimes call a frozen rope. If we turn gravity back on, the ball begins to drop as soon as it leaves the pitcher's hands. In fact, it ends up being two and a half feet below its release height, or right where it would smash into the catcher's mask. Now, let's add air drag and see what happens. Airflow past an object can be smooth, causing a lot of drag, or turbulent, causing less drag. A smooth ball is actually a very poor aerodynamic shape. It pushes a relatively large layer of air, called the boundary layer, along the front of it. At very high speeds, this layer blows off and allows the airflow past the ball to become more turbulent. Think of a nose cone on a rocket ship or an airplane. The pointed shape doesn't let a boundary layer form, so it has low resistance turbulent flow at lower speeds. The baseball, with its seams, is much more aerodynamic than the smooth ball. 108 stitches cause turbulent low resistance airflow around the ball at lower speeds, like dimples on a golf ball. In addition to the size, the shape, and roughness of the ball, its velocity also changes the drag it encounters. Baseball pitch velocities are between 50 and 100 miles per hour. This range allows for different air drag effects. Air drag is proportional to the square of the velocity. This means that the ball thrown with twice the velocity encounters four times the drag force. Don't forget about air itself. Temperature, barometric pressure, and humidity all affect air density. The denser the air, the harder the ball has to push through it. So let's see how air drag affects the trajectory of the pitch. The drag force slows the pitch by 5 or 10 miles per hour, giving gravity time to act, making the ball drop further before it reaches the plate. Take the knuckleball. It's thrown with as little spin as possible, rotating only a few times on its way to the plate. So why is it so hard to hit? When the pitch tumbles towards the plate, the smooth leather areas on the ball allow smooth airflow past the ball, while the seams cause more turbulent flow and less drag. These unbalanced forces change the ball's trajectory in unpredictable ways, resulting in a pitch that's hard to hit and catch. Pitchers also take advantage of another force called the Magnus Force. Back in 1671, Sir Isaac Newton wrote a paper about the spin effects on the flight of lawn tennis balls. In 1852, German physicist Gustav Magnus did experiments that confirm a spinning ball experiences a sideways force. This force is the Magnus force, and it's the fundamental principle behind the curved flight of any spinning ball. As a spinning ball moves through the air, the boundary layer separates from the ball at different points on opposite sides of the ball, farther upstream on the side of the ball that's turning into the airflow, and farther downstream on the side turning backward. This causes an asymmetric wake behind the ball and a pressure difference across the ball. 
This pressure difference creates a force at right angles to the motion of the ball. And pitchers can orient the spin direction and Magnus force to make the trajectory of the ball change. Now let's make gravity, air drag, and the Magnus force work together. We'll use the curveball as an example. The Magnus force makes a topspin curveball drop more than it would otherwise effectively adding the Magnus force to gravity. When the pitch is halfway to the batter, the Magnus force has had time to move the ball only a few inches off course. But closer to the plate, it's almost a foot off course, with nearly half the break happening in the last 15 feet. The hitter thinks the ball is breaking, but it's really under the influence of the same forces. The whole way to the plate. Pitchers can apply a spin at an angle so that the combination of the Magnus force and gravity make the ball move to the left or right at the same time controlling its rate of drop. So, with turbulence, airflow and Magnus force, it's easy to see why learning physics helps everyone appreciate baseball.